Already cancelled. Already cancelled. Are we uh, rolling everything, yeah? Everything's rolling. We're oh, good to go. Excellent. Welcome, already cancelled, Kenya's Yaz of Nisha. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, we bring you episodes every single day, Monday to Saturday. And, uh, you know, drop comments, rates, do whatever you got to do. Have a bit of fun with it. We love to bring guests on from time to time. And today's guest, oh, this guy is exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited to have this guy on the air. He's, uh, he's done... Uh, Survivor Australia twice. Yep. Twice. N- 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 I, don't, I feel weird saying runner up twice. I kind of want to say two time finalist. Two time finalist. Yeah, that's, that's a better, better. way to say <laughs> two time finalist. Uh, uh, he's got his book out released uh, late last year called How to Win Friends and Manipulate People. Excellent <laughs> book. Uh, he's been featured on the New York Times as well for best TV episodes of 2023. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and, and there's a long list of accolades that George Mladenov. Mm. Uh, his Majesty King George. Mm. I was about to get to that. Thank you. AKA King George of Bankstown. Is that right? Or was it just like, King George? Oh, King George is fine. <laughs> but I, am, I am of Bankstown. He is of Bankstown. Very, very, false proud, advertising. very proud to be from Bankstown as well. Great, yeah, so part, of, great I, part of Australia. Can I ask you a question, George? Because I've watched this season, but I don't actually recall that when, when you got titled King George, mm. Was that given to you or was that self-proclaimed? No, it wasn't self-proclaimed. So what happened, um, I had a very kind of interesting dynamic on my brain's time Mm -hmm. and um, it didn't suit me. So I came out guns blazing to destroy everything around me as quickly as possible and rebuild it in my vision. And um, I think around episode five or six, I found a hidden immunity idol. Yeah. I whipped it out, flung it on my chest. It's now tattooed on me over here. Yeah, oh, I thought so. That and then, wow. then I told myself, I'm going to let the rats run. So I walked across the dead riverbank, lied <laughs> on the edge of a cliff, and I was just waving at everyone and they were going, what are you doing? And in that kind of like anarchy that I needed to create, Right. They stupidly voted off my number one enemy who wanted me gone at all costs as if it was going to upset me. It was like the best thing that could possibly happen for me. And um, <laughs> as I was waving at them, like you see it back on camera, you had Laura, one of, a good friend of mine and an ex-play in the Survivor community. She was like, look at King George over there ah. lying down on his throne. So once, ah, okay. once I heard them calling me King George, you're like you only need to throw a bone at me and I'll run with it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, oh, God That's save name. our gracious king. I love this. I love this. Now I'm actually a new person to Survivor. A new fan. A Same. new fan. I've never, wa- never watched it's it until this year. www.10play.com.au. That's right. Yes, yeah. exactly <laughs> right. I even got it on my phone now too. Now Yaz showed me a clip uh, late last year of mm. you in episode seven of the Heroes vs. Villains. That's right, yeah. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? It I was a complete breakdown. Now, if it, can we just explain Survivor a little bit if no one's like people, because yeah. we, we broadcast, like broadcast, but we go, we have a lot of international fans as well. I know mm. I know Survivors across the, country, across the world, but if anyone hasn't seen it, explain it in a nutshell. What don't look, don't look at me, let George explain it. I think Survivor really reflects reality and, um, People that don't watch Survivor think it's about like physical strength and yep. whatnot. And we've got the current season airing on 10 and 10 playing in Australia and throughout the world, Titans v Rebels. And what we've seen in the first week is a real evolution in the game where they're focusing on politics, alliances mm. and social dynamics. And really the goal of Survivor is um, how you get to the end and – you have people get voted out um, and it's basically a game of politics. That would be the short answer for it. On an island? It's it's a a game of politics in harsh conditions where people's truest versions of themselves come out and then the game happens. But you can strategically play this game. Of course. By a lot of bitching. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's a lot of everything. The thing yeah. is, it's like people have different value systems. So mm. when you bring your kind of like life context and experience in a difficult environment, mm. that's when you see who you are as a person mm. and how how you react with like a guillotine hanging over your head ready to go vushka <sighs> is what happens on Survivor when someone has to get voted out. And that kind of like pressure cooker situation, it's just fascinating television. And that's why it is, yeah. it's the biggest show in the US. It's the the most passionate, engaged following of any TV show in Australia. Mm-hmm. 
and it's why it's been around for more than 90 seasons in the English speaking world worldwide. 90 it's crazy. Seasons? It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so that's big. the English speaking world because it's like almost every country in the world has their own version of Survivor. Yeah. And I find it interesting that you say, like, and it's true, it's like when you put in a pressure cooker like that, the truest form of people, like it comes out naturally because mm. you want to survive at the end of the day. That's why it's called Survivor. Mm. But I'm so curious, prior to Survivor and, mm -hmm. you know, being on TV and doing all this stuff, like, what makes you go on to a show like that? Like, what were you doing prior for you to then go, hey, you know what? I would kill it. Well, for me, I would, prior to Survivor, I was a political staffer. And yeah. um, I was quite active in the Labor Party in, in Bankstown. Oh, so you were in politics? You were already doing I, all I that? I worked in politics. I was never a candidate. Okay. And um, I closed that kind of like politically active chapter in my life about a year and a half ago now. But what made me want to go on a TV show? Mm -hmm. Simple. It was Survivor. Um, but I, I talk a little bit about this in my book. So I had two favourite shows growing up as a kid in Western Sydney. It was mm -hmm. Survive and The Amazing Race, and I love them both uh, equally. Yeah. And then you've done The Amazing Race and as well. And then I've done yeah. The Amazing Race. It was um, <laughs> also available on 10 Play. They <laughs> <laughs> um, so get paid $5 for every time. Every time <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why 10 keep feeding me work. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I um, – me and my twin brother were going to be on season two of The Amazing Race Australia when we were both 21. That was about 13 years ago. Okay. And um, without kind of realising it then, we smashed the entire kind of like audition process, the the thing you go through in a TV process, mm. and um, we completely fucked up the final interview. We were at the stage where we filled in every visa and whatnot and yeah. then um, like in life you grow as a, as a human and, yeah. and whatnot and um, – we just sat there and we froze and that kind of really? like stuck with me for so long. I was like, I really wanted to be on the amazing race, yeah. whatever. And then, you what, know. What do you mean you froze? Like you couldn't answer the question essentially? Hi, Avnisha, tell me a little about yourself. And then the response was crickets, you know? Oh, like, no. Yeah. You know what that is? That's just overuse of the brain. You would have had a million things going in yeah. your head. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just like my, my twin brother is not like me at all. So it was like okay. he froze. I froze. You and have a twin? I have a twin, yeah. I had no idea that you I had I did twin. not know that. Yeah. Well, you, are you identical? Yeah. No, not identical. Okay. No. No, is he bigger or uh, is he bigger than you or small? He's tall and skinny. He's tall and tall. Well, okay. actually triplets, but one died in the womb. Oh. It's very sad. That's unfortunate. That is very sad. sad. I feel oh. like I ate her and she's this scar on my chest thing. Well, what's your <laughs> scar? Did you say you ate her? <laughs> he feels like. Who knows what yeah, happened Yeah, but you know what? Womb. That's happened a lot. <laughs> my, um, I think my, one of like my brother's uh, fiance. I think she ate her twin. That's not a thing. They're not <laughs> eating each other. Thing. No, but she said she ate her twin. <laughs> And now you're saying you ate one of your triplets. Oh, who knows? Do it was in the womb. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure babies don't get onto solids until uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a year in or some shit. What the hell's yeah. wrong with you people? Well, moral of the story is this. I didn't feel the need to go on a TV show, but come season four of Australian Survivor, it's airing on TV. It's yeah. late 2019. Mm. I've been a public servant for three years. I'm bored. I've got a great work-life balance after not – being a political staffer anymore. And I yeah, went, I could imagine. Oh, fuck this. I think I can do a better job than all of them. And yeah. then I just applied and I got on. Wow. Except COVID-19 <laughs> happened and yeah. I didn't get on. But then they picked up the process about nine months later. Okay. And that's when, and that's so when that's you went to the Australian Outback, right? We yeah. did. And did that, not go to – we were going to go to Fiji. Yeah. I've been told afterwards yeah. that it was all locked and loaded. We're going to Fiji. I'd done everything and then – Scomo shot the ball and that was happened. And that was Brains versus Brawn. It would have been another Brains v Brawn. Yeah, the the ghost season that never happened. But yes. then it did happen in 2021, of course. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, right? Because you look at where um, Survivor uh, hosts the games, which countries, which islands and all that stuff. I feel mm. like the Outback, because I did in the Outback, because I'm assuming it had something to do with COVID and yeah. travelling and all yeah. that yeah. shit. go overseas. The Outback looked fucked. It was fucked. Like these I've I've been I've been in S Samoa is tough because what Samoa is is wet and humid. And humid, right. yeah. They like in Samoa your clothes are always damp mm -hmm. and it rains torrentially for one or two hours a day basically every single day and it's it's hard. But do you know what Samoa has? It has warmth. Yeah. Right. Mm. Relative warmth at night. And during the day, or you walk in a beautiful ocean that's just missing the resort, okay. and it's kind of that mental reset. 
you don't get that in, in the Klong Kari in the desert. Mm. In you know, where you just get it's all dry. Three yeah. hours, yeah. three hours somewhere out of Mount Isa, and it's forty five degrees during the day oh. and two degrees at night, and you're wearing a t shirt and shorts. You know. So you, how did you stay with this fire? Really, fire and cuddling. Oh, it, it was exactly that. And mm. but we were like right on top of the fire because we were like frozen in in the outback. It was just the I, I am adamant that that season that we filmed Brains v Brawn in twenty one was the harshest location anywhere worldwide ever. It looked oh, it look, yeah, I can only imagine. Has anyone ever been through the outback? No. no. I've, I've, I've driven from Sydney to Perth. It took me five days. Mm-hmm. And I remember driving to the point where you're going like at least 120 yeah. mm-hmm. and it feels like you're going 40 kilometres an hour because you've been going 120 for that long. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, George didn't have the luxury of a car yeah. at the time. <laughs> I don't know what's worse. Yeah, I'd, I'd reckon sleeping on the desert floor with fucking snakes <laughs> around you. Well, we had two Easter, we had eastern brown snakes. At, at one night, um, we had an eastern brown snake slither into <gasps> Shut our up. shelter, I and that was bombs. the exact same time that um, Georgia was having a medical episode. Oh no! Yeah, so she's on the floor in like horrific pain. She ended up having a topic pregnancy, which is really sad. Oh. Um, and then you hear one of the producers. We're all on top of her in the shelter. And the producer's like, everybody freeze. And we're like, what is it? And she goes, snake. And oh, then, God. And then literally it's like 50 centimetres away from her, this eastern brown snake slithering by. We're all about like half a metre away from it. And we're like, holy fuck. Oh, yeah. my One, God. One wrong move. Holy fuck. So can I, can I find out? So how – like we only see obviously what's on camera. Mm. How, many, how many producers and production team is behind mm. that camera? It, I, I, th- I think it's weird on Survivor because that's kind of like your world and that's what you're exposed to. And you hit the point, uh, I would say the first time I played, it's different the second time you're used to it, but the first time I played, it's they're like the flies that move around in the background because they don't speak to you. Mm. Um, the only time that you have an interaction with a producer is when you are having your confessional film, your one-on-one oh, interview. Yeah. And the oh. interaction is, hi, Avnisha. Tell me about that time when Yaz did X, Y, Z in camp. And and then it's just right. like, it, it's not. There's it, no friendly basis. There's no yeah, rapport. Are they nothing. trying to, feel like, are they, are they, are they, like I'm sure as a typical producer, and we've worked with so many across different content, mm. radio, whatever, right? Are they, they're obviously wanting to get certain answers out of you, right? Well, it's a TV show. Yeah. And I think what worked for me is I was a good storyteller. Mm. Yeah. So when I get asked a question, I answer it. But I, I think like having been my former um, member of parliament's boss media advisor as well, it was like an all-encompassing job. I was used to writing a media release and writing yeah. 10 snazzy lines and getting a phone call at 5 a.m. going, I'm on live radio drive time and I need what, – what am I saying on this issue? And gotcha. then I'm having like a debate and a mind exchange with my boss at five in the morning on mm. what What's is the, the line way? that, mm. you know, AM radio is going to use on, like a, a on a state political issue. So yeah. when I went out there, my mind was programmed on lines and right. this is how you answer a question, yeah. which is – just what you're supposed to do on a TV show. Mm. So did I think I was going to break a world time record for airtime on a reality TV show? No, I, no. Did, I didn't think that. But you did, right? But I did. That's a big accolade. And then what it, what it kind of, what I realised is what was working for me is what worked through the audition process. I never deviated from who I was as a person mm. and it made a good TV show. And when I hear so many people that go on reality TV shows and they talk about the edit and airtime this and that, yeah. the yeah. reality of the situation is, I'm sorry, darling, TV's not meant for you because it's not meant for everyone. I was yeah, waiting, oh, I was I, waiting yeah, for that to go, sure. I'm sorry, darling, you're boring. Like I was yeah. waiting but for it to Well, go. that's how it is. It, yeah. It's, yeah. it's that. Like, yeah. like a lot of people nowadays, they're so kind of like used to social media and that's not how TV gets consumed. No, it's and not. And you, yeah. you can control and manicure a personality and your image on social media, but you can't fake that when you've got cameras filming you 24-7. No, exactly. If your personality shit, then you're not going to get but much of a run on a TV show. You know show. when you like, like certain TV shows, like I don't know, like the first thing that comes in my head is Ooh. like maths, right? Mm. And I'm assuming like when you have to do Never season- Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> when you have to do season after season, is there such a thing as paid actors? Like 
Not, but you know not on Survivor. I, I'm, not on Survivor, I but... I don't know about maths. Maths are yeah. a bit different. But Survivor's like the OG reality TV show yeah, where okay. the players generate the content. Yeah. yeah, see, that's good. Not the producers. The players generate the okay, content. Okay, that's, that's a good way to look at it then. Yeah, because... That's a good way to look at I it. If I talk to you in camp and then I'm constructing an idea or a vote with you or a move or whatnot, I'm doing that. And then do you know what you do then? You walk up to a box and you write down a name. Mm. So... The players control the reality mm. on a reality TV show. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I have not seen a second of Maths. It's yeah. a rival show to Survivor <laughs> and I encourage everyone never to see a second <laughs> <laughs> No, I get that. But you know what though? I, like, that was the first example that came to my mind. But mm. there's many reality TV shows that I watch and sometimes some characters seem yeah. so unbelievable that I'm like surely it's – Either they've been paid to do this or mm. they're getting extra or getting something additional for acting that certain way. No, 100%. If that makes sense. I want to touch on, I want to touch on because in the game, it's, it's it, like you said, you and I would have a conversation, then we'd both go write a name down. There's a, there's an element of manipulation in there. There's an element of, of um, persuasion and you were really good at doing that. Mm. Um, the, the, the scenes I saw that Yad showed me of you, you literally broke apart an alliance in five minutes <laughs> at a tribal, at a tribal council, <laughs> which was really impressive. If you actually watch the show and get into it, it's like, that is the skill you need yeah. when you're going through this on how to win. Mm. You even went out and then wrote a book about it. I did. Yes. <laughs> Please. Buy when me. you're sitting, the when you're, very how, smart, to, by how the way. to win and manipulate fr- people, how to win friends and manipulate people. Now this is obviously like, it, it's a, it's, I, I've flicked through a little bit of it. When you when you're putting this into let's go firstly into Survivor, mm. what what's going through your head? Like, are you thinking of strategies in your mind to how to manipulate this person? Because you're looking at like, what's the process here? Do you do you look at their their ethics, their morals, how they react in certain situations, knowing how mm. what to say, how mm. to say it, how to turn someone against someone else? Mm. What's your process in manipulating a person to make a decision? I, I talk about this in my book in terms of um, what to kind of look for in a situation. So firstly, people are scared of the word manipulation when they shouldn't be. Manipulation is only a negative if only one party benefits, like the manipulator mm-hmm. manipulates the manipulatee without getting too technical like that. Um, but if you make a situation work for you and the other party, Mm -hmm. you have manipulated that situation. But if it's the win-win outcome, then it works for both of you. And that was really the secret to my Survivor game. So, yes, I manipulated people, but when I offered people a deal, it was a great deal for them. And in most cases, it was better for them than it was for me, mm. but I made the situation work for me. And how do I do that? I, I run through this in my book in, um, you know, I use stories and examples um, from my life, from Survivor. Um, it's an entertainment book. It's not an, it's not an academic book. Like it's a fun, easy read. Um, but you really have to work out people's intent, priorities and motivations. And mm. if you can work that out through facts, through guessing, um, through working out like the pr- probability of something happening, mm-hmm. you've got the edge in the situation. And if you can make it work for both of you, you can manipulate the situation where you get a good outcome for yourself and for the other party and then it's a win-win. Can we just stop for a second and just smash these? Because it's giving me anxiety it staring yeah. at it. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well, cheers, everyone. Cheers, cheers for George being cheers. here. Oh, I'll drink no, my coffee. I need a chaser, eh? Let me see your faces first. I don't think you need a Ooh. chaser for is it. it. Is it's it clean? Nice. Is it it's hot? Nice. That's it's, nice. You've got to try it yet. It's not hot. It's got a nice aftertaste. It's delicious. Okay, shots That wasn't done. as bad as I thought it was. Exactly. So, Kian, last year, obviously, um, he, he wasn't a fan of Survivor. He wasn't really watching it mm. religiously as he is um, this year. Um, and for me to sell him on the show, because mm-hmm. I wanted him to watch the new season, I showed him um, the episode with you, Georgie, Return of the King, episode seven, season eight, Australian Survivor. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the one where you, the easiest way to say it is you brain fucked Simon so hard. Mm-hmm. To essentially put a uh, gun to his head and pull the trigger for his game, right? Mm. This episode was written up by the New York Times as one of the best TV episodes of 2023. And that's across all TV? Across all, it's it's the New York Times. It's it's across every episode in the world, right? Um, Mm, And it's not just Australian Survivor, TV in general. Mm. Um, I happen to notice that this was written up during your time 
in America. Mm. George. <laughs> Who did you get drunk? Did you manipulate anyone? <laughs> did you use your powers in New York to manipulate anyone? So um, my my um, timeline, I piece this together. I was in Vegas. I wake up. I see, mm. you know, I see this article come up and I'm like, oh, that's good. That's great article. But I'm like, why has this person written this? And then I'm thinking two days before I was at the Survivor 45 finale. They have – really huge survivor parties in the US and I was invited to go and it was great. I had a good time. Yeah. Um, and at this party, I was doing a few fun things. I had a tube of Vegemite putting it on people's fingers <laughs> going, would you like to eat some? They're like, oh, we hate it. But the other thing I was doing, like I have with you, is buying people tequila shots oh, because gosh. YOLO, <laughs> why not? I'm in the US and they're like tequila. So um, I'm, I think I bought that journalist a tequila shot. I don't know for sure. <gasps> Bullshit, you knew. Um, I, I had no I, I swear to God, I had no idea. Really? But um, I'm telling myself I'm always nice to fans, particularly yeah. the ones that are engaged. Yeah. And, um, yeah, God save the king. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You know, I understand that you're probably like, oh, why was it written up? It really was some of the best TV I've seen in a very, very long time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I don't really watch TV, but when I saw that, I was like, I, you know what? I'll, I'm not, I'll be honest. I actually watched it again last night. Oh, did the, you? This, that scene? I fell asleep to it. Like oh. I was watching it. I was watching it and I was like, oh my God, I can sleep well tonight because I just can't get enough of the show. So I had to go back to your season now. Mm. And I went specifically, I messaged you. I was like, what was the, season, the episode yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. And I went and watched that episode again. And it, it's hard to like jump in at, at, season, at episode seven on that, because, but because I understand the game and I know you were coming in today. Mm. I was like, I have to just, I just want to see it again. And the beauty of that, because I'm obsessed with the I tribal can't even, council section. It was that much of a, of a brain fuck, George, that mm. I, I won't even be able to explain it here for the listeners. So what I'll do, I'll put a link in the descriptions that people yeah, can actually give it a go. Wa- so yeah, they can watch, watch it, it for themselves. You go into this mm. and everyone's perception of it, ultimately in the beginning, it's a game, right? Mm. But then you go in, things happen and people get backstabbed and all that stuff. After the show's done, is there, like and you said you were all friends, which I find really interesting, but is there any bad blood between people after the show that they just can't seem to reconcile because of what happened in the show? I think you're friends with the people that you're friends with in there. And- okay. um, the 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 funny thing, sorry, let me tequila's coming. Tequila's coming. Tequila, tequila, tequila thing. <laughs> so, I think you're friends with the people that are out there. And the funny thing um, about me and Simon is, um, yes, I very much so antagonised him at that tribal council. Yeah. Um, and he 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 was very harsh on me in camp, particularly in the first two weeks, and then it eased off. To be fair to him, um, but. I, I never had an issue with him personally. Mm. And then I, I know when we were at Jury Villa together, like all we were talking about, particularly me to him, because he thought I hated his guts, I was like, Simon, this is going to be the best season ever. And our story is going to be one of the greatest survivor yeah. arcs and narratives worldwide ever. And he's like, oh, I thought you hated my guts. I'm like, no. It's a game. I'm brother. like, you're the fool that kept trying to vote me off when I'm offering you peace, but that was your life decision. Yeah. Um, I, I think in terms of just like a more friendship, you're really friends with the people that you were allies with in the game and yeah, friends okay. within the game. Everyone else is like the old work colleague. If you see each other, you see each other. You're but amicable. It, you're but amicable, yeah. yeah, unless like something huge happened. You so know? How, is, how has Survivor changed your life though? So you've done mm. two episodes. You've obviously gone on and done, you know, Australia's got, uh, sorry, no. Um, Amazing Race. Amazing Race. Mm-hmm. What, how has your life changed since doing that? Oh, it changed completely. I started um, – working in the kind of like entertainment and media space. Mm. And then I made a life call in December 21 where I, you know, ironically the day before I got made a ongoing public servant. I got the job for life. I could have yeah. sat in that seat, <laughs> government job, fucking for life. <laughs> Fuck. You know? And, and I, it's a comfy seat. I'm just I saying. was like, but I'm bored as batshit. Yeah. Right. And I was like, I told myself if I – hustle, I think I can make this work. And then God willing for me, it has worked. Yeah. So um, I, that's what I did. And then in, in the one gear that followed, which was um, 2022, um, it was a hustle and a grind. But I look at myself like a business. Yep. And any business that starts, you have to start small, work out what works and what doesn't, and yeah. then take it from there. And then when I go back to 2023 – I was on three TV shows, um, my season of Survivor, you know, recorded The Amazing Race Australia, 
Um, I wrote and released a book. I had my dog on Dogs Behaving Very Badly. I was the <laughs> face of that show, which yeah. had like huge ratings on Network 10, and you should watch that on 10 Play as well. <laughs> Five dollars, um, baby. Yeah, yeah. I did four <laughs> overseas trip. Um, you know, three of them that were work-related. One of them was just a fun mm. holiday to Eurovision and going to Italy. And I've had the best year of my life. How do and you fit that all in one year? Yeah. I, and, and then I was doing like other kind of like consulting boring work as well. So yeah. it's just like you – if 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 you back yourself, I yeah. think in any aspect of life, that kind of like self-belief, <laughs> self-drive and self-confidence will – Get you there. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Agree so you've with gone that. from you've gone from suits to Samoan shirts. Well, I've gone Samoan button ups. I've gone from basically I'd gone from a pen pusher, yeah, or like a brief writer at a government agency, to someone that is a TV personality. And would I have thought that? Like during COVID or in 2017, no never in a fucking million years. And tell us, so you that you, you see the the brand, the building, the business, the entertainment side. How's it going on the side of you know? relationships or mm. you know things like that your you personal find, you, life you mm. found you found like you're more sought out now oh i, I think so i yeah. don't think so but i think it's hard because it's just like is this person trying to talk to you because they know you from a tv show oh. or are they generally how do you figure you? out how do you figure that out i mean you're, you're you, i think you can you've, quite quickly so like i was i i was single for about like four years and then um I may be in a relationship, so oh, okay. we'll see how we're going. That's yeah, exciting. Yeah, and, but I was single the, for quite a long time, but that was by choice, yeah. you know? Like, particularly when I'd made such a big life decision um, just to change what I was doing from a career-wise because, you know, I've got a law degree. I yeah. was probably one of the best political staffers in New South Wales state politics. I had a very cushy job in the public sector, and then I said, no, I'm not interested in that. I'm going to hustle and give this a go. Okay, I like that. That's awesome. Two times finalist, George, on Survivor. My mm. question to you, would you do it again? I am very happy to be the commentator for Australian Survivor on Channel 10. Okay. So I you know, I, I did that for season seven, which was two seasons ago. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do it last year because I was on the show. And then I'm very thankful that um, Network 10 asked me to be a co-host uh, for Talking Tribal, which yes. is on 10 Play. And then um, I... I I look at Australian Survivor and it's my baby. It's something that I'm proud of. Um, I, I I love it. And then you know I'm I'm a legacy player, um, and I couldn't be more delighted um, by that. Um, do I need to play again? It's a it's a question I will answer if I get that phone call. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you feel like being a past player and one of the most dangerous players uh, in the game? Do you think you have a chance to even make it past, let's say, the second week of Survivor? But I did in Samoa. So no one went in there with a bigger target than me. That's right. And almost every single person um, pre-gamed against me, which unfortunately happens on returning seasons. That's right. Yeah, okay. Um, but pre-gaming doesn't work. Um, and there's one way to deal with a threat level. It's through reason. And if – like that's not a valid concern for me um, because I live through that in Samoa. Yeah. So tell us, I've, I've, I'm sure that these skills that you've built in manipulation and, and uh, that you uh, you do ethically, uh, they can benefit you in so many different things. In business, they've, they've helped you in the game, they've helped you with your political career, um, you know, just normal everyday interactions. Does it help you in like, I don't know, playing poker or games like that? Does that, does that? Well, you've mentioned poker a few times on the show, right? Well, I definitely mentioned poker and um, I, um, am I a semi-pro poker player? I think I am. Yeah. I, I think I feel like, um, I, I've loved poker since I was 18. I think the first time I met you, Yaz, was at um, a WPT series at don't, St. John's Don't Park. tell anyone I play poker. <laughs> <laughs> My family don't anyone. know. <laughs> nah, man, yeah, that's, yeah, that's actually where I first met George. Okay. Um, Do you know what's interesting about poker? You meet people from all walks of life. That's right. And do you, like sometimes people skills, they really do get developed. Where did I develop mine? I worked at Kmart Bankstown. Oh. I worked at Phone Tab. You know, I, I used to do charity phone calls for Vision Australia, the, the charity for um, people that live with blindness in yeah. Australia. Um, so it, it's just like you combine that with, you know, I, I didn't work the last two years of my law degree. I was hustling on the – APL poker circuit and then I started working and then when mm. you work in politics um, you don't have much free time and then yeah. when I start kind of like building that when I give myself a good work-life balance with a cushy government job um, and then 
you know, I, I'm telling myself last year I'd like to play more poker. So I started doing the Australian circuit. Oh We've God. got one of the most kind of like highest caliber poker players in the entire world here. It's like extremely you active. Go, you go to Vegas and yeah. the field is soft. You know, the the players aren't as experienced. They're not I wouldn't as tactical. expect that. Okay. They don't work out the odds. So um, I had a great year last year. Yeah. Um, I didn't win a like a A category circuit, but I had I think three five figure collects, which I was very happy with. Five Damn. figures. Yeah, that's um, massive. Yeah, you can look at look me up on Hand and Mob. It's always a public record. <laughs> Hand and Mob. That sounds like a porno website. Is it? No, it's <laughs> not. No, that would be funny though. That's it. <laughs> look, poker. Poker is a but very um, it's a very niche game. A lot of people don't understand it. People assume it's just gambling. Completely. Well, false. people assume that it's all these yeah. rebels. Kind of playing yeah yeah, yeah. And, you know bikes and whatnot but, but what, it's skill what you, it's skill i'm assuming i've I don't play but i i have two poker chapters in my book poker is about two things it's about mathematics and it's about uh the human element mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if you can work out the odds and combine that with playing the person um and knowing the statistics of you winning or the probability of you winning you'll you'll be where i'm at which is at least an adept player that will run better more often than not. Yeah. yeah. Am I a pro? No. Um, Same. I feel like my face would just I'd give l- it away. <laughs> I'd love to like, you know, do a few overseas trips this year and just keep, you know, yeah. cashing at these tournaments. Well, invite yeah, me yeah. with you, Georgie, because I'd love Where to Where do you want to go? Wherever Cambodia? Want. It's good <laughs> Cambodia's got big games? They do. They have really? like a 1 million USD first prize. Ooh, Shut the ooh, fuck ooh. up. <laughs> it's this week though. We missed it. Maybe we'll go Philippines in three months. You just let me know and I'll and you book the flights with your winnings and we'll go. We'll You've got a there. podcast to do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just real quick as well, your uh, your heritage. Let's talk about that. So it's mm. uh, Greek and Macedonian. Mm-hmm. Um, how much of your heritage comes through in you in this day and age, do you do you find yourself still, you know, connecting with your your culture? Uh, culture. Well, my I think my culture is Australian, and you compare that with a heritage that's Macedonian and Greek. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm very proud of my heritage, um, and I think um, people um, shouldn't lose kind of like track of they they're kind of like the upbringing and the values yeah. and i think culture and heritage plays a lot in that and um i think being a being a wog if you want to use the word um there are things that bind and that's like family and friends mm. and mm. sticking up for people and sticking together and I, I i think particularly living in western sydney where you're always surrounded by second third first generation australians that's why we have a very different mentality and take on mm. life yeah. where it's, you know, no bullshit, more direct, more frank, um, yeah. you know, better. That's how I look at it. Yeah. I like that. So let's let's en- encapsulate everything about you. So, I mean, part of your self-care and personal growth, you've built um, a understanding of what you talk about in this book is is ways to benefit yourself, but also benefit other people. Mm. Yeah, I like through that. manipulation. Mm. Yeah, uh, relate- it sounds weird when you put those two. No, it is right, but, it, but imagine- if you make if you if you make a situation yeah. work better for you and it still works for the other side, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. Oh, like, I'm putting, yeah, yeah. I'm putting that's myself- negotiation at the end yeah, of the day. I feel right? like you manipulate me a I lot. I manipulate everyone <laughs> like, around. I got me. a tech. Uh, I better not. But say his that isn't beneficial message, for the other party. There is a lot of things that Yaz would text me. That's not sustainable on the long term. Yeah, and I feel like fuck. He just manipulated me and not just me my wife as well <laughs> oh damn i really want to know the text message now but anyway let's talk about a couple, that couple of days ago yeah. um no no but here's the thing right if i was to get like caught out manipulating right let's say i'm dating someone she's like you're manipulating me and then i turn around and i say yes darling but i'm manipulating you for the better of you like it just sounds fucked up yeah but i think that i think the point is is finding is is allowing her to come or that your partner to come yeah. to the place where if they you know that yes, it's benefiting if there's you. no win for her then it's bad manipulation but if there's a win for her and the situation is beneficial for her and it's better for you, she's not going to be walking up to you going, you manipulated me. She'll oh, be okay. thinking it's the best deal in the world ever. So it's all about the deal. Mm. The art of the deal. The art mm. of the deal, yeah. Um, you should start a masterclass, George. I should. Yeah. Honestly, the masterclass of manipulation. It all, it what all, should it I charge? 10000 plus GST? <laughs> I, I don't know how much they go for. But how about sure. we start with $30? $29 for the book. That's the first opening, 10% opening expense. 10% discount for, from us. Um, we've, 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 we've discovered that you may or may not be close to a secured relationship. 
which mm. is exciting for you. And mm. um, I'm sure exciting. that that's, that's a hard thing to find, especially uh, after going through, you know, the celebrity status and the TV and all these, you know, a lot of people coming up to you and having to dis- distinguish between who's a real person, you know what I mean? Mm. Who's a real one. Mm. Um, your career's changed over time. Mm. Um, and it's been a big, a big change from the boring sort of pen pushing, which I'm sure some people find that exciting. Yeah, a lot of people Not me. do. Um, <laughs> let's, let's talk about, um, you've traveled around the world as well. Mm. You've, um, I'm sure the financial wellness is doing quite well for yourself. Be- thinking about the, uh, three, five figure wins. That's just on the one side of one stream. Um, your fashion, some Melbourne shirts. Mm. That's changed. You like yeah. that? That's, That's changed. Fun, isn't it? I think it's very fun. I do like it's three. Is it two buttons or one? Well, yeah, he's wearing a, he's wearing a bowling well, shirt. To right be fair, <laughs> this is not the Samoan shirt. Yeah. That's what I'm wearing. But on, it's uh, talking tribal for the entire it's all recording about session. Well, that makes having. sense. Yeah. Um, health and fitness. How are you staying healthy? Are you are you oh, a fit that's person? That's been a do problem for me. The last twelve months. I think when I had my injury, it really kinda, what injury? Um, I had an injury in episode one of Heroes v Villains. Um. That's why I have this face. The the tattoo. scar on his head. Yeah, but um, what did you do? I um, was pile drived from a box into the shallow ground. Um, pile drived from a box. Yes. So he like he rolled off this top of the thing and then he went head first into some yeah. shallow water. So and hit a um, rock or something. Did you? I actually tell no. We just hit the floor. Myself and uh, Jackie Glazier, my um, the poker pro friend of mine that we're on the same tribe. So um, I talk about this in my book. So um. Jackie had bone damage. I had muscle damage, which oh. took a long time to get diagnosed after the game. And mm. then it turns into like other kind of like issues where it's just like before I went into Samoa, I had, I was in like the best fitness of my life. I was like killing it at CrossFit, you know? I, yeah. I was oh, so you like, did CrossFit? Yeah, I was. How was that on the knees? Um, I think it's fine. Yeah. I never Depends had any on your issues, knees, but it's just like <laughs> when I go from that to not being able to like hold myself up with my own body weight and then yeah, yeah. I have impingements and stuff like that. I can't, I've put on 20 kilos in the past 12 months, which is um, not abnormal after Survivor, but I, I, I have started going back to CrossFit and oh, I'll be going to CrossFit at four o'clock today and I'll slowly start getting that routine again and building the strength awesome. in my shoulder, well, you I know- hope. I yeah. hope. I'm you, sure you will. You know what, yeah, Georgie? Sure you will. I was watching you last night on uh, Talking Tribal or the other night, um, and I actually complimented you out loud, and I said, George looks absolutely fucking fantastic. Mm. So um, don't let your brain get to you. I think you look great. Yeah, don't let you. Yeah. You're, you're oh, no, I don't think I look bad. But yeah, it's just, like, I, just, like, I didn't fucking say yeah, I was bad. Yeah. I did not say that. Thanks, Yaz. But, um, yeah. Noted. No, but I'm just um, – I've got a bit more cushion than I did uh, before I yeah. – Played Survivor and had my injury, but that's I've had a good year. Like yeah. I also yeah. love food. I love. Let's talk oh, about that. I mean, you, you, have you, you tried Popeyes chicken? Yes, yes, yes. It of course. Yeah, no, sex I haven't. In your mouth, I it is had sex in your mouth. <laughs> oh my god, spicy Popeyes chicken! Just oh, where did you <laughs> have it in the in the states? Of course, in the states. Yeah, okay, I was so about to say. Ca- I was like, I've had it. You can get it here. I've had it in the Middle East. Is it, and and I've had it in the States. The, the Middle East is great. I didn't like the one in the States. It was <gasps> too greasy for me. No. It was too oh, greasy for me. I had it in I had it in Inglewood, California. You know that nice suburb of LA? <laughs> Inglewood, California. Yeah, I think it's the there. safest, one of the there safest were, suburbs <laughs> in the world. It was yeah. like all these gun barriers. You couldn't do takeaway and I was holding in a pee. Oh. But I got my Popeyes before I went to <laughs> LA. <Good on>, yeah. <laughs> and I <laughs> ate it in the Uber and I just, every city I was in, I was getting Popeyes. And then Yum. the one thing that made me win an endurance challenge on Survivor was KFC. The KFC I win. won the KFC endurance challenge, which yeah. was like a miracle because um, I used to love KFC. But let me tell you now. Popeyes blows it out Have of the park. Have you tried yeah. raising canes? No. Okay. What? Sorry, it's just a side question. A it's in America. No, oh. no, no. It's in America. It's like it's fried chicken, right? Yeah. But like it's famous, and the videos go viral on TikTok. And they have this like big cup dipping sauce, and you get your fried chicken, you dip it in this dipping <gasps> sauce, and it's meant to be incredible. And now there's a dupe version, I think, in Penrith here. In, oh, okay. In, Gotta um, love the dupe versions. Well, yeah. yeah, but apparently it's like. Right. Everyone thinks it's amazing. So do you, do you always get like takeout, or you are you you do you cook? Do you cook? What's your oh, what's no, your cooking, famous meal that you've cooked? Cooking is a disaster. For Let me oh, guess. Really? Rice and beans. Is I that can, what it is? I do know how to cook rice and beans or rice and lentils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I I tend to eat out a lot. Yeah, but so you've you got this, you've got this Greek heritage, this Macedonian heritage. Yeah. You can't you can't, you can't take you I haven't taken find, something to. I find cooking very stressful. Like really, people, yeah. people are different. You've I gone on fucking Survivor. Yeah, I would rather go on Survivor and do ninety four. Days, then 
buy enchiladas from Audi, put them in the oven, and then like I accidentally put olive oil on top and everything turns into giant black smoke. And then after that, I'm like, this is too much. I'm just going to... Fair enough. I'm just either going to eat food that family members prepare or Mm. eat out. The life of a celebrity, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. He strategizes and manipulates as a as in as a subject matter expert. You can't be good at everything. That's right. Yeah, you can't. If I go to if I go to the grocery store and I want like a healthy meal, I'll just buy one of those microwave Ooh, the microphone. Like that. <laughs> I'll buy one of those microwaved like cups of like rice and quinoa. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love those. And like the sirena tuna because I'm yeah, ethnic. Yeah. 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 No, there's no way you're getting John West. I just, <laughs> I just, <laughs> expensive. Mate. I just put the two of them together. For me, that's cooking. If it yeah. involves minimal preparation and not using the like you know, heat the oven, or the oven, the, yeah, then yeah. it's fine. A microwave I can handle, and yeah. an oven is too much. Listen, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't believe him. He's manipulating us to make us yeah. feel sorry for I him. I kind of feel like I want to cook him a meal. Yeah, exactly. Why do I want to cook him a meal? Oh, I'm I don't know why. I just, I got to read the book. <laughs> make uh, me a bunny chow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're fucking good. I've actually been talking to Lorraine about cooking bunny chow lately. Really? The fuck is bunny chow? I've it's, never it's, heard of that. He's so uncultured. What the fuck it's, is bunny? It's a very famous South African dish. It's it's basically deep fried, not deep fried, but Fried bread, yeah, and um, beef curry. Oh, I thought you were gonna say bunnies. Yeah. Oh, it's not oh, like fucking bunnies. We're not all yeah, hunting it, with <laughs> leaves over there, everybody. <laughs> well, when you're okay, calling it, like we get the bunnies out. When yeah. you're it's calling it bunny it's a bunny stew. <laughs> That's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Uh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, we yeah bunny chow curry bunnies. We call them. Yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> curry bunnies. I fucking cooked the best. I cooked the best curry yesterday. Did you fucking really? Fucking best. Yeah. Was it a Durban curry? Uh, I don't know if it's a Durban curry. It's just a curry that my mum passed down. Yeah, my mum's passed down beef mince curry with a potato. In a wrap, a soft wrap. We put in a soft wrap, mm. um, sour cream, mm. um, some mixed lettuce. Look, okay, you've you've completely won me over. Yeah. Oh fuck you! Yeah. Oh. Come around for dinner. You obviously need a fucking meal. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to. <laughs> let's get on because you mentioned. I need to mind my macros. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's look at. Let's look at. Uh, I just really want to touch on social media because obviously everyone's on social media. What's your favorite app? What are you looking at? Are you on TikTok? Are you on Instagram? Are you? I are you? have an Instagram. Yeah. Um, but I made my Instagram. After I filmed my first TV show, okay, um, but it's it's in terms of fan engagement, I'm on Instagram. And, and what I, are you? But what are you doing on TikTok? Oh, on Instagram? Are you going? Are you I, actually on social media? What you look? What's your what's your what comes up on your for you page? On my for you page, or your like reels? What, reels? What are your reels on Instagram? My my, my reels? I've got no idea. I don't. I'm, I'm still so bad with technology. So hold on. Yeah. The question is: Are yeah. you like present on social media? In the no, sense no. I'm that very like present. Yeah. Okay. My Instagram at King George of Banks Down and yeah. Twitter at King George two two o o. But that's all I have. I feel okay. like you'd be more, I don't know, and this is an assumption, so tell me if I'm wrong, but you'd be more present on Twitter or you- Is a Twitter man? No, I only, I, with, Twitter, I gen- t- uh, with Twitter, I generally only tweet about TV stuff okay. Okay, okay, and okay. engage in those kind of conversations. With Instagram, um, it's, it's more about my life and what I'm doing, okay. but I am not a content creator. Okay. okay yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Are right. you open and willing for people that are following you or fans of, of yourself or at least listeners or whatever that to, to content that you do put out in terms of TV or whatever? Are you open for them to contact you, to reach oh, out to you? Sure. To they, do, do you? Do you usually get people asking I, you advice, things like that? I always respond to my DMs. Yeah, okay. If there's one thing that you learn when you work in politics, whether it's in an electorate office or on a campaign, is that the people matter. Mm. And what's given me a career is fan engagement and long may it continue. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Well, is there anything that you'd want to, anything else you want to leave us with before you go? Besides, obviously you've got the book, Mm. you've been on the New York Post, you've done multiple seasons of Survivor. Any life advice? You know, any motivational quotes or anything like that? I think the biggest motivational quote is for people to actually believe in themselves because once you unlock that power, good things happen. Mm. But if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will because that's the energy that you'll project in any situation. Do you believe in manifestation? Not necessarily manifestation. I think there's more of a case of taking the bull by the horns and making things work for you. And if something's not working, change what you're doing work out the problem, mm. come up with a better plan and put it into practice. And manipulate everybody. And manipulate everyone around. <laughs> put it into practice. <laughs> That's true. I like that. Okay. Well, the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Manipulate People, was out now. This, uh, it, Do you have a quick tip for manipulation? One of the favorite tips in this book. I think it's what I just said. It's believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Will. And yeah. who is this Who is this one written for? I mean, if there's a specific person that this is written for, someone that maybe might need help in career or something like that? I think it's written 
Um, it's written as an easy, entertaining read where there's an important story and lesson at the end of each chapter. So whether you want to hear detailed survivor stories because there's a couple in there without getting into too much game mechanics um, or where you have a practical example um, where I share a, a life experience and a lesson and then cohesively um, it's something that I think people can apply in their lives but when they read it they'll think it's fun. Mm. So you've manipulated people <laughs> to be able to read the book all the way through. <laughs> all the fucking way. Yeah. No, well, I love a, that. Do you know who I hate? I hate academics. God, I hate academics. They use, they use fancy words sometimes when unnecessarily. When that academic got voted off as the second boot of Australian Survivor Titans v Rebels, I was like, praise be. <laughs> who do you think is going to win the Survivor Series this year? Who knows? But do you know what's given me a lot of encouragement? It's been such a good start. I think yeah. this is one of the strongest starts we've ever had to Australian Survivor, and I can't wait to see what happens. Well, three blind sides in three episodes, I don't think that's been done before. Yeah, but it's just the manner of the blind sides and what what the people are valuing on the tribes. It's mm. been just engrossing and entertaining, and mm. the game's just elevated. And then I said this on Talking Tribal on 10 Play this week, that we're on the ninth season of Australian Survivor, and – Doing nothing and getting to the end isn't good enough anymore. And to see these 24 new players come out guns blazing and mm -hmm. doing really well and making a really entertaining TV show is very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Well, Survivor's obviously out. Everyone can watch it. I think it's Monday to Wednesday and then it's on a Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Tuesday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday was just a bonus this this week. Oh. Yeah. We only get three a week. But then, of course, Georgie, you've got uh, Talking Tribal. What, what time's that on? Talking Tribal will be released at the end of the week. So every Tuesday on 10 Play. And it's in podcast format as well. Oh, good. Good. Excellent. Yeah. Love it. Well, George uh, Miladinov. Mm -hmm. <laughs> George Miladinov? Just call, just call him King George of Bankstown. King George of Bankstown. AKA King George. George <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Already Cancelled, yeah, mate. Thank Appreciate you. it. No problem. And thanks Pleasure for the tequila shots, too. Are you doing the next round? I'll do the next round. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. We'll turn into a fun podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Already Cancelled. If you like the podcast, prove it. Like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to leave us a cheeky review.